From UFOs to ghosts and psychic powers, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now and learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. Homeopathy was invented by the German physician Samuel Hahnemann in the late 18th century. The word homeopathy comes from two earlier Greek words, homeos, which means the same or similar, and pathy, which means suffering or feeling. From this etymology comes the fundamental basis of Hahnemann's homeopathy, the law of similars. Essentially, if a large dose of a medicine can produce certain symptoms, then a small amount of the same medicine will stimulate the body to fight those same symptoms. The first homeopathic hospital opened in 1832 and the craze spread throughout Europe, soon crossing the Atlantic. Yet the fad died down relatively soon afterward and the last homeopathic hospital in the United States closed in 1920. Today, homeopathy has been discredited. According to critics, homeopathy is nothing more than quack medicine peddled by the greedy to the gullible. According to supporters of homeopathy, it works. So who's correct? Here's where it gets crazy. There's a bit of truth to both sides, but much more on the side of the critics. According to numerous studies, homeopathy simply doesn't work. The active ingredients in a homeopathic remedy are diluted so much that they have no medical efficacy. The patient consuming homeopathic cures is essentially drinking water. Yet if this is true, then why did homeopathy become so popular across Europe in Hahnemann's day? The answer is found more in historical context than in clinical effectiveness. The medicines of the time could often contain toxic ingredients such as mercury or highly addictive drugs like opiates. In comparison to these medicines, the relatively non-dangerous experience of taking homeopathic dilutions seemed to produce better results. As medicine became more advanced and increasingly regulated, the world seemed set to relegate homeopathy to the dusty halls of discarded pseudoscience, along with phrenology and mesmerism. But in the 1970s, widespread interest in holistic and alternative medicine brought homeopathy back into the spotlight. Yet again, numerous studies have conclusively debunked this practice. Arguments in support of homeopathy often have pseudoscientific roots or inconsistencies. So how can its supporters have a grain of possible truth to their claims? It all goes back to the placebo effect. As noted in an earlier episode, a placebo is simply an inert substance used in place of real medicine. Patients who take a placebo and believe they are taking a genuine drug can sometimes show improvements simply because they believe they are taking medicine. This doesn't mean that homeopathy is harmless. After all, what happens when someone takes a homeopathic treatment for a condition like malaria? This doesn't mean that proponents of homeopathy have given up. Research into homeopathic remedies continues today, and although the mainstream medical world dismisses this research, it has a large audience. In fact, the practice of homeopathy is often lumped in with other types of alternative medicine, and conspiracy theories about alternative medicines usually trace back to a single idea, that Western pharmaceutical companies are suppressing alternative medicine to maintain their profit margins. But, again, there's simply no evidence that homeopathic medicine works as anything more than a placebo. Unless, of course, there's something they don't want you to know.